In this tutorial, I'm going to go over the level editor. I'm going to show how to tweak it out, make it a little bit more customized. I'll go over my favorite hotkeys, as well as introducing a few tools like the Unreal Measurement tool, and also custom collections, which I find really useful. And finally, I'm going to also include a link in the notes below to this document, which will have a summary of all the hotkeys that I use pretty often. So let's jump in Unreal and get started. All right, so we're in Unreal, and I'm going to just go kind of clockwise through the main options, and then I'll go a little bit into how I tweak out my blueprints palettes. All right, so first, the modes palette. You can, with any of these, actually with any the interface elements, you can drag it around, you can dock it, and it'll give you different code hints. You can scale it. And then if you happen to close it, you can actually sort of hide these tabs as well, which is kind of neat. And you see these little, this little yellow triangle if you want to bring that tab back. You can close it. And then if you want to bring it back up, the shift one through five will toggle between those different menu options. I often leave it up. You have to kind of decide what you want to be pervasive when you're working, but I, I kind of like the symmetry of it. But if you also, like sometimes if I'm working and I just want to clear the decks, I hit the F11 a key just to go into full screen mode. All right, once you get used to using a lot of these hotkeys, you don't need probably this toolbar interface as pervasive as it is. So quite often I will go under the edit, editor preferences, and then I'll just type in toolbar and you can use these small toolbar icons. So if you go back, that minimizes. So I mean, once you've got that, then just memorize a few things like, well, one thing that's really useful is Alt-P to play and escape. And I mean, if you're doing VR, it's just Alt-V, so that's pretty similar. Uh, what else? So if you wanna, get rid of this or hide this every once in a while. It's a uh, control shift T, turning that on and off. Um, okay, let's just talk a little bit about the world outliner. So the world outliner is a few things. You can click and drag to hide. If you click at the top, you hide all, but you can just click and drag. Like if you wanna just do a bunch, you can drag up, that's useful. You can filter. So like if you select one item, you can show only selected, so to like isolate. You can also grab a bunch like shift select and put them all into a folder, which I, I do that all the time. All right, let's move on to the details palette and also world settings. So with the details palette, quite often I will use the right click and like, so if I wanted to get the location of this UFO and use it, I can go right here and right click, copy it. And then I could just go in and paste. So that's a really great way of sharing information. You can do the same thing and just copy and paste that into blueprints. If you're in a, something like a post-process volume, you can, it gets really long. So finding the exact thing that you want is not always easy. So you can just type in the search here. So if I just wanna like turn off the visibility of the object, I could do it that way. Easier to find things. Let me close that. If you wanna pull it back up, F4. In fact, even if I'm in the world settings sometimes and I wanna like, oh, I wanna get the details of that object, instead of mousing back over, you can just hit F4. So that's useful. I also put in, if I want to switch between those two, I put in my own custom hotkey. So uh, control alt W for me pulls up world settings. You can just do that in world in the editor preferences, just type world settings. And you can do that just for a ton of uh, like anything that you don't see that you, you notice that you're doing over and over again, just go into the keyboard shortcuts and you can just scroll through. There's a ton of different options. And sometimes when you're working in certain areas, you can just customize them and that's really useful. All right, 
what else? Let's, let's go into the content browser. So the content browser, if you've closed it, so control shift F to pull it back up. What's great about the content browser is that it has the same hotkeys that I, I use the same hotkeys as windows. So like if I want to create a new folder, control shift N. So my new folder. But what if I want to rename that? F2 is a quick rename hotkey. I use that all the time. One of the things that I use quite often is if I select an object, if I want to see it in the content browser, where is it located? Uh, control B as in boy, and that highlights it in there. Uh, in addition to that, the hotkey that I use, Control E will open up a related menu item. In this case, it's the static mesh editor. So let me close that. But if it's uh, quite often, if it's something like a blueprint, so um, let's just click on the first person character. If I hit Control E, that'll open up the blueprint editor. So it's really useful. Control E is just such a time saver. So what else? In the content browser, sometimes when I'm working on different a specific mesh with like a material on it, I will go in and create a custom collection. So I just hit Control B. I'm gonna click here to switch to the collections view. I can create a new collection. My collection. And then when you have that collection starting to run, all right, now we can go back into the paths view and we can select certain things that we want to add to it. And I think the easiest way to add now is just right clicking and go under manage collections. And you can just either check that in, or you can do it really fast and just click on the button. It just adds it. So either way, but if you want to remove it, you can remove it right here. You can see it's in the collection, just uncheck it and it removes it from the collection. You can also go back into the collection and you know, you can remove a bunch of objects. So let's just go into the materials. Let's say we added several materials. You can add those all to the collections. Now let's go back into the collection. We can remove like a few of these and just remove those from collections. All right, let's quickly switch over to the paths view and go to the materials area. Now, uh, I want to show quickly how to change the scale of these. So that helps. You can get to see more in, uh, in the same amount of space. And then I also wanted to quickly show how to see collisions in editor. That's really useful. Alt C will display collisions, that little purple line surrounding these objects. And that's really useful when you bring in an object and sometimes you think that you're, you can't move and it might just be your collisions are just crazy. View modes and what they do. So from alt zero to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, put those in, let's switch back to lit mode. And you can see the, you know, the name will go right up in here. So alt four is go back to lit mode. And finally, let's quickly jump into blueprints. That's one of the things that with blueprints, I'm gonna hit F to zoom in there and control E to open that up. One of the things that with blueprints that I prefer is to drag the details panel way over here. And let me show you why. So if I hit, if I wanna create a new variable, my new variable, quite often I just wanna start modifying the functions. So Instead, I'd have to like mouse way over here. So sometimes I think it's just a lot more useful and convenient to have it way, just right here. That way I can create variables and then just mouse right down. Um, also, like after you've created a variable or after you've mod modified your blueprint, you know, hitting F7, like you get that little question mark up there. So hitting F7 will compile the blueprint. So that's another time saver. Another like small one, if you want to do a get or set, you can hold down the control for a get and alt to set, which is useful. All right, that pretty much wraps it up. The, I guess one or two quick other things. I use Blueprint UE um, and I'll put that in the notes. 
if you want to just copy and paste a bunch of nodes and then you want to have them come back in or save them out to a web page that's really useful you can also do the opposite which is like you can copy and paste this into a text editor and it just turns into all text okay i'm gonna switch back got a quick few more to go i'm gonna hit control tab and that allows you to do what you you know what you'd think right but also any menu that you might have closed like you can quickly pull up the sequencer if you know if I didn't have that open so and I like to dock it right here also if you are working in certain like maybe you're working in two different areas I said um, bookmarks quite often uh, control and then a number key so I just did control one let's see and then I'll do control two so now if I hit one and two I can quickly jump in those bookmarks oh I mentioned that I was going to go over the uh, the measure tool so you can switch views really quickly this is a front view so J is top and then middle mouse button will use the measure tool so if you need to know how many units your building is if you're building it you know you're maybe you're gray boxing inside of unreal you might want to know how many units something is so that you could either go into your some other editor that you're building objects in just to get proportions right so I find that useful all right so I'm gonna go quickly back here so hit alt G so alt G H and J will switch between the different views you can get those if you just drop that down I use control shift H to pull up frame rate especially if you're doing VR it's kind of useful to know but you know there's a lot of diagnostic things I'll put a few into the notes that I've got going on well that's getting pretty long so that'll wrap things up thanks for watching